The best place to start is always with an introduction. So here goes. My name is Field Yates, and all roads in my life lead to Central Connecticut. I grew up in the suburbs of Boston before enrolling at Wesleyan in the fall of 2005. Like most college freshmen, I was that unique blend of exuberant but nervous upon arrival. Everyone says college is the best four years of your life. As it turned out, everyone was right. My four years at Middletown concluded with a major in psychology. Shout out to Professor Steven Stemmler, who really piqued my interest in the field. But in truth, much more than that. The friendships forged at Wesleyan have proven to be as impactful as any I've made in my life. As five of the groomsmen at my wedding are fellow cardinals. In the classroom, I grew, stretched, and improved semester over semester. On the football and the cross fields, go birds! I can't say that I became a decidedly better player, but my view from mostly the bench was something I'll forever cherish. Wesleyan was the best. It remains the best, and I'm so happy for all of you that you have the opportunity to enjoy this special institution. So that explains the first chapter of my life in Central Connecticut. Let's move to chapter two. While Bristol, Connecticut may not strike you as the kind of town where the worldwide leader in sports would reside, it is in fact home to ESPN. For nearly nine years now, I've been fortunate enough to call ESPN my employer, covering the NFL during that time. The simplest way to describe what I do for a living is that I watch football and talk about it on TV. As I often refrain, it beats working. ESPN eventually brought my wife and I to Connecticut, so here we are again, 20 minutes away from Wesleyan. As I said, all roads lead back to central Connecticut. All right, so enough of the biography stuff. Let's get to the talk. As you pour over ideas about how to address an audience that may or may not have a vested interest in football, your mind goes all over the place. Normally, I'd zoom in for 10 minutes on the depth chart of a roster, possible draft scenarios. But today, I'm zooming out as I examine the industry at large and patterns to track going forward. My hope is to impart some ideas that might be applicable in other fields. The question that I'm frequently asked is what I see myself doing in five years. How about 10 years from now? It doesn't make me unique or different from most people I know. Asking someone in his or her early 30s what the future might hold is an icebreaker as old as time itself. But while for years, decades really, a person working in sports journalism might have been able to aspire to one day become the back page columnist of a newspaper or the lead anchor of a local news station, the way in which the media industry has changed so rapidly over the past 15 or so years has rendered the idea of mapping out a five-year plan kind of moot. And that's where I wanted to focus some of our time together today. Because while the world that I live in professionally is coverage of the National Football League, some of the dynamics involved are applicable to news and media in general, a sector all of us are privy to on a daily basis. As you think about your daily routine, I ask you this. What's the first mechanism you rely upon to consume media? Subsequently, how many different mediums do you tap into on a daily basis to consume said media? Whereas there was a time in my life when watching SportsCenter, usually a few times over, would catch me up on all the events from the night before, now my day starts with my phone. I have a run through an assortment of apps, most of which you could likely guess. Twitter is my source of news. Instagram keeps me up with my friends and all of their personal lives, while other apps such as Snapchat, Facebook, and TikTok have a massive and overwhelming presence in the social media space, even if I'm not personally a frequenter of any of them. The bread and butter of my role at ESPN has long been, and will remain, linear television. My goal every single day is to find ways to provide entertaining, smart, insightful, and lively analysis that our viewers deem worthwhile. But that's not enough. There's more. Just as ESPN is perpetually expanding its horizon, it is incumbent upon all of us in the media to do the same. I think about correspondence with people that I have in my life and how the way in which they might access my content is so decidedly different. Well, my dad may catch a report of mine while watching the local news when they dive into sports, and my 19-year-old cousin, she might just be just as apt to send me an Instagram post that shows something I said or reported. While some have long refrained that content is king, that's only part of the equation in this case. It is about finding ways to maximize your content distribution across a variety of platforms. Which brings us back to the quandary of the question often asked. What do you want to be doing in five years? Well, for all I know, apps that are just starting to find their footing, such as Locker Room and Clubhouse, could be dominant forces within our field. Staying ahead of the curve is an objective in many walks of life, while also representing a challenge when you don't know what the curve ahead looks like. The second of the half of the quandary that I evaluate constantly is this. It's not just knowing the means I have to connect with viewers, listeners, readers, and followers. It's understanding the right content to share within each of these means. To wit, 
While I'm on television, a typical block, the time between two commercials, is somewhere between 6 to 12 minutes. Factor in promos and transitions, plus the strong likelihood that I'm sharing the set with at least two other people, and by the time you do the nitty gritty math, the amount of time I actually get to speak is probably closer to two to four minutes per block. Television is a medium where the opportunity cost is obvious. If a viewer isn't interested in watching, she or he can simply press one button and be on a different channel instantaneously. Our job isn't just to draw you in, it's to keep you there. A notable portion of my work at ESPN also includes the world of podcasting. The investment made by a listener is different here than it is in TV. While there's no rule that defines how short or long a podcast is, the bevy of my shows range from 40 to 60 minutes. Whereas my time covering a subject on television may be limited to just a couple of minutes, the podcasting medium allows me to empty the bucket with exhaustive thoughts. Anything goes. If the topic du jour is covering how the Patriots, coached by the greatest of all time and fellow Wesleyan graduate Bill Belichick, are primed for a bounce back season in 2021, my overall sentiment won't change from one medium to the next. The way in which I am able to share that sentiment does. So as I step back and think about the evolving world of media, I ask myself what lessons I have learned that feel applicable to everyone, not just those that work inside of it. First of all, I'm often reminded of how now, more than ever, we all have a platform. Not a day goes by that I don't come across a tweet from someone that I have never met and will almost assuredly never meet that goes viral due to the nature of its content. Hundreds of millions of people are able to share thoughts, opinions, messages, and purpose via social media. And while I'm as prone as anyone to find a way to peruse 90 minutes of Instagram content dedicated nearly exclusively to golden retrievers, it's also evident that social media can play a far more influential and powerful role in matters of consequence. That role was never more apparent than during our most recent presidential election in many ways, including the reach it displayed in encouraging voter turnout. One of the most fulfilling elements of my experience at Wesleyan was gathering new perspective from a diverse student body, leading me to feel and experience growth on a near daily basis. I think back on that now and realize how much those that I attended school with and those of you who are at Wesleyan now have an ability to create change going forward. So stepping back from my work in the television and media industry, I realized the importance of being dynamic and nimble within life. I mentioned earlier how it was frequently told to me that college was the best four years of my life. It was the truth, as there are moments in time where I wish for nothing more than to revisit the glorious days spent in Middletown. And I've already reflected on the relationships that were built during my time as a cardinal, along with the immeasurable information taught by our wonderful faculty that were contributing factors to why it was the experience that it was for me. But in addition to that, and with the benefit of 12 years of being out of college to fully understand this, I've come to realize how much Wesleyan empowers its students to be not just independent thinkers, but dynamic thinkers and minds as well. As I look forward to my industry and working my hardest to be a consistent, reliable, and insightful television presence, along with all the vessels I have to share and report information, it is apparent now more than ever that an open mind and dedication to exploring what is new are essential. The world of media is ever-changing, with more waves ahead of us that as of right now are unpredictable. Keeping up with those changes and continuing to maximize output within them presents a perpetual challenge. But we feel ready. Thank you for your time today.